Alright, here we are again with a fresh sheet of paper. And what we've just done is figure out the mass moment of inertia for our assembly. Now what we need to do is think of what we're trying to get to accomplish again. If you recall, D'Alembert's principle says that the sum of the torques is equal to zero. So, these torques are going to be the externally applied torques to the system, as well as the torques that are trying to stop the system from rotating. So in our case, what we're going to have is an externally applied torque for the electric motor. We're going to have some kind of torque based on the force of the air that's resisting the motion of the blades through. And if you recall, we did get a formula in the setup of the problem that tells us what force is being applied to each of those blades. So we're going to have a torque due to that force, call it T sub B. And finally, we're going to have an inertial component that's going to resist acceleration of the rotation of the system. And to solve it, we set those equal to zero. So we have the sum of the torques is equal to zero. We know that the motor is applying a torque of 25 newton meters to our system. The inertial component, C sub i, is equal to the mass moment of inertia of the system multiplied by the angular acceleration. But what about this torque that's due to the force on the blades? If you recall, I'll throw this back out for a moment, we have these blades, we're spinning the system, the blades are passing through air, and there's a force on them. The force is being described as K times V squared times A, A being the area of the blades, V being the linear velocity at the center of each of those blades. We also know that torque is equal to force times distance. So again, we go back to this distance from the center of rotation, this is the moment arm over which the force at the center of the blades acts. By knowing that, we can say that T sub B is equal to the force times 0 0.8 meters. The force, as we already said, is equal to K V squared A times 0 0.8 meters. What about V? You, I'm sure, recall that V for a rotating system is equal to omega r. So again, here's that r. Omega is one of the things that we're trying to find for the first part of this problem. So let's substitute what we know into this equation so that we can get a nice relationship between the inertial torque, blade torque, and the applied torque. So, E sub b is equal to k, which is 0 0.025, with units of newtons, second squared, per meters to the fourth. So that's k. v is equal to omega r squared. Omega r is going to have units of meters per second, so velocity, and we're multiplying that times the area, which is 1 meter squared, and then finally we're multiplying that by the moment arm, 0 0.8 meters. So first, let's go ahead and reduce our units and make sure that it makes sense. We've got meters to the fourth in the denominator, meters squared, meters squared, meters, so we're going to end up with meters in the numerator, seconds squared, and seconds squared. So that's going to cancel out. That leaves us with newtons. So our resulting units will be newton meters. Torque makes sense. Let's multiply the constants that we know. Zero point, excuse me, 0 0.025 times 1 times 0.8. So... 0 0.02. The only thing we haven't accounted for is oops, excuse me, this point 0.8 squared w or omega squared and 0 0.8 squared. Sorry, that's kind of messy. But. So 0.8 squared times, there we go, 
So each of those blades is going to give us 0 0.0128 times omega squared in units of newton meters. So what that tells us is that we can substitute this into the equation and come up with a relationship to let us solve the problem. That relationship is going to be D of the electric motor, 25, minus the blade torque, which we've calculated here. We have two blades, so it will be 2 times 0 0.0128 omega squared. So 0 0.0128. 0.0256 omega squared minus I sub g, which if you go back and look at now, I was 18.51, so minus 18.51 times the angular acceleration is equal to zero. So this relationship tells us what is happening with our system. Now I need to take another little break to do a couple of family things. I'll be back and we'll finish this up to answer our questions. If you recall, our questions are find the terminal velocity, angular terminal velocity, and find the angular acceleration and motor power at a rotational speed of 20 radians per second.